Bismillah Ahmaduhu wa salli ala Rasul al-Kareem The Arab world has been warned by the Prophet Wailul lil-Arab The Prophet said destruction on the Arabs Bisharrim maqtarab because of the evil that has come close to them and now the Arab world has been warned with what happened in Lebanon. You see, they were working on the deal of the century, as you all know, the deal in which the greater Israel, part of the deal is the establishment of the greater Israel, the, for the next few steps in the establishment of the greater Israel. No one knows what that plan really is, but you know, they're working on the greater, uh, the deal. And uh, while this deal is going on, what happens? Boom! And now, every Arab who has been resisting the, 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 the Israeli plan, or the plan offered by the son-in-law of Trump, anyone who has been resisting has been warned. That you better be careful. And you better just take the deal we are giving you. We're not going to ask the Palestinians if they like this deal. Just take the deal. Let's make a collective yes and let's enforce this. And let's just force this upon them. And if you say no, then we have warned you. And you will know what will happen to you and your people and your family and your money and your relatives and your properties. It will all evaporate. Am I the first one to say this? No. You see, uh, our Sheikh Dr. Isra Ahmed said this in the 1990s, he said this. In the 1990s, when he spoke in Chicago, he gave this particular talk I want you to hear. The division that we have assigned you, we shall remove you. And will bring other. But then again, second downfall. فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعَدُ الْآخِرَةِ لِيَسُوءُ وُجُوهَكُمْ وَلَيَدْخُلُ الْمَسْجِدَ كَمَا دَخَلُوهُ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةِ وَلَيُطَبِّرُوا مَا عَلَى تَطْبِيرًا And this our second downfall came at the hands of European powers just corresponding to the Greeks and Romans at the hands of whom were punished the former Muslim Ummah the punishment to the Muslim Ummah the second phase of punishment came at the hands of colonial powers of Europe this phase started essentially, basically, from the fall of Granada. Spain. A whole country washed off, you know, ethnic cleansing going on in Bosnia. It's nothing as compared to the ethnic cleansing that was done 500 years before. It's nothing. How many, many millions can be these Bosnians? What was the number of the Muslims in Spain? Devastation. Not a single soul remained. And please note, I don't know whether you have noted or not, you live in the most educated area of the world. But whether you know these things or not, I don't know. Why was 1992 the year of Spain? The cover story on Newsweek. Why? Because 1492 was the year of the fall of Granada. Why were the Arab rulers taken to Madrid for talks with Israel? Had any international conference held before that in Madrid? Of course not. Why in Madrid? Come and see your collective graveyard. You were here for 800 years. Come and face Israel here. And this will be, this will give you a shape of the coming events. What happened to you in Spain 500 years before is going to happen to you again in your own home in the Arab countries. That was the message. 1992 is the year of Spain. Why? Full 500 years past. 
and please note only after six years after the fall of Granada, Vasco de Gama discovered the sea route to the east round the Cape of Good Hope, 1498. Because till that time, the Ottoman Empire stood as a sentinel at the gates of Asia and Africa. This Western imperialism couldn't go to Asia and Africa via the land route. So they had to find an alternative route and they found it. And what happened then? Java gone, Sumatra gone, India gone, one by one. And that second phase of our downfall reached its zenith in the early part of this century, when after the First World War, even great, the great Ottoman Empire just vanished. So the point being here, that the Arabs have been warned and they have been told, you either comply or you die. Comply or die. Either you comply or we will eradicate you. We will demolish you. We will finish you off. And we can. If we want to, we can. And if we don't, it's our choice that we didn't. And so what are the Arab worlds, what is the Arab world going to do? So there is looking for nuclear weapons because they know they're stuck. Trump's elections are up ahead. He's going to give in to any demands made to him. The Arab world is all already in fire. They're already, you know, creating a fake uh, controversy with Iran. And they want to get rid of uh, Iran and any of its by proxies. That so there's absolutely no resistance for what Israel wants. And they have pretty much accomplished that at this point. And they're even talking about it. Do you know that the Jews, they're raising two, they're raising red heifers, red cows. You know how Allah said, kill the yellow cow? Well, they're raising, the, they think it's red and they have to raise these red cows so the ashes of these cows can be used to make their third temple and the third temple is what Christians feel that they need to bring back Jesus and the Jews feel that they need the third temple to bring back the Messiah and so they're raising these cows that they're going to sacrifice and lay down the ashes of these red cows so that they can build the temple there and they have some very strict right you know rules and regulations of how everything has to be how al-aqsa has to be removed and how this will come in its place and how the blood of the sacrifices will be done there and how the ashes of these cows will be there and they're getting ready with everything <laughs> these are the red cows Hashem spoke to Moshe. And Aaron, Hashem means God. This is the statute of the Torah, which Hashem commanded, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and have them take for you a perfectly red, unblemished cow, upon which no yoke was laid. By the way, I want someone to do research between the word red and yellow, because they got it confused. Obviously, the Quran is right, and they're wrong. And so find me, you know, somebody do the research. Why is red, yellow, and yellow, red? Why have they mixed it? Is the word very similar to each other or what? And I'm sorry, this looks brown to me. It doesn't look red to me. But they're saying it's red, okay. Five years ago, the Temple Institute began its Raise a Red Heifer in Israel project. Just under two years ago, we announced the birth of our first red heifer candidates, two perfectly red heifers eligible for the historic role of being the red heifer who returns to Israel after 2,000 years, the ability to achieve the highest level of Torah purity. Since their birth, the rabbinic experts of the Temple Institute have been keeping a close watch on these heifers. For any non-red hair that a heifer sprouts, or any minor injury that the heifer sustains, will disqualify it from being a kosher red heifer. This past week, June 2020, we visited our two most advanced red heifers and filmed them. In the upcoming weeks, they will receive another visit from the Temple Institute's experts for yet another close inspection. Should either or both of these red heifers remain eligible candidates, 
we will soon be ready to advance toward the stage of actually preparing the ashes. How wonderful to imagine that these two innocent, unsuspecting creatures could, in the very near future, advance Israel and the world to the next stage of the redemption and the building of the Holy Temple. So you see now how things are coinciding? They are getting ready to build a temple. They are getting ready to bring down Masjid al-Aqsa. They have already taken you to Oslo in the 1990s to tell you this is what your collective graveyard is. And be ready, be ready, be ready that the same thing will happen to you if you don't agree with them. And now they have thrown a bomb in Lebanon, Beirut, telling you again, come on guys, you got to give in. So unless you have Allah on your side, unless you make Allah happy, unless you turn to Allah, unless you repent to Allah, unless you cry to Allah, unless you become Allah's, you don't stand a chance. All your pl plotting, planning, thinking, you know, that somehow we will survive, we will survive the greater Israel onslaught, you think that you will survive it, you are only deceiving yourself and you're blind. They are more committed for their cause than ever before. So the red heifer is here. You have been warned with their bombs. You have been warned with the in regards to the the deal of the century. You have been warned before in Oslo. They took you to your collective graveyard. And then people tell the people say you know, isn't it just easier just to be a good Muslim? Yeah, if you want to go to Jannah at your individual personal piety, do all the good things you need to know. But if you want to help the cause of Rasulullah, if you want to help the cause of Islam, you want to help the cause of the Ummah collectively rising up together, then you have to be aware of these things. And you have to take steps in regards to these things. Otherwise, you will be ready to go to your grave and you will be ready to pass the judgment in the day of judgment. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Even that's a big maybe. But yeah, it's possible that you didn't worry about the, these things and you didn't worry about the signs of the day of judgment and you weren't worried that there are tall buildings and yet you're still making tall buildings like they are in Arabia and you weren't worried the Prophet said kasiat in ariyat women that are fully clothed but yet still naked and you, you're still making these designs of these clothes and you didn't think wait these are the signs of the day of judgment and you are doing all those things that are the signs of the day of judgment and it didn't occur to you maybe we're doing things that are the signs of the the day of judgment we shouldn't be doing this and then you have people saying oh don't worry about that don't look at the signs of the day of judgment let's just worry about your individual piety then why did the prophet tell us about the signs of the day of judgment why did he tell us about women so that you can just uh, uh, just uh, save yourself and save yourself from the tall buildings and save yourself from the uh, the the women who are not dressed and the women that are going to follow the jad and all the other signs of, just to be aware of it just for information or to somehow find a way you know you don't have to know these things to be pious you don't have to know about the red tall the tall buildings to be pious you can keep praying but the reason is the prophet told us because there is a reason the reason is you have to take certain special actions at that time you have to take some special actions at that time collectively. And so I'm going to end with this thought, leaving you with this thought, that Israel has warned you. And now I want you to think, how close are we to Allah? Because we will not be, whatever actions we take will not be enough unless Allah is on our side. أقول قولي هذا استغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات